you think the song Tester from the album, which is bound to be a single sooner or later? It is now, yeah. It is now? Well, we're going to release a 12-inch single in November, but it is a single as of when uh, it got charted in Toronto at CFNY. They're playing, playing the heck out of it. I was just about to say, do you think Tester actually has a chance of becoming the first Skinny Puppy sort of radio hit? Um, I think there's a possibility. I mean, when we started out musically on this song, it was a bit of an experiment and to see how far we could could actually take this melody that we that we came up with, and it was a bit bit of a surprise for us. You know, we don't actually sit down to try and write a, a commercial song or a non-commercial song. It just so happens that when we write, it turns out the way it does. So in this particular case, the the, the experiment turned out into something where um, we left the music very plain and very simple. And the issue that we're dealing with on top of it is a plain and very simple issue too, the issue of animal rights and mm -hmm. the section. So we thought to make people listen a little bit, we would, you know, hold back a little bit, not necessarily for a commercial single, but for an attempt for people to listen to the lyrics and see what we're talking about. Of all the songs you've recorded, at least on the new album, it, it's the most um, clearly and blatant anti-vivisection song on the yeah. album. Mm -hmm. And the easiest one to understand as well yeah. on that particular subject. Am I wrong in saying that Skinny Puppy gets more press, more good press, and exposure outside of Canada, uh, Belgium, Great Britain? I think there's there's just still the the home hometown Canadian band stigma where it's uh, we're either not as taken as seriously. It's it's like when a band's playing in their hometown, and after they've played a couple times, they don't they don't get the kind of response that they have. Or I mean, it's also coming back in, into Canada you, you may not get as as much as you're worth for a gig because there isn't this sort of mystery uh, mysteriousness of, of the band or far awayness as far as it's like we're home we're close and and we're m more relative but I mean as far as press I mean we're doing tons of interviews right now I mean we've got, had write-ups in Globe and Mail and and uh, and local stuff especially uh, in the last little while from the incident in Cincinnati I was just about to mention that I wasn't sure if it was true or not, but you spent a night in jail in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. You did something to a, a dog puppet or something, and no, I mean this is this is really a, a great issue that, that that sort of like came out of nowhere, and um, our show deals a large large amount with vivisection and anti, uh, uh, you know, showing the people what what what's going on. Really, a graphic demonstration using a, a, a toy dog. And so somebody didn't think it was a toy and called the police, and the police came investigating the dog. And uh, when they found out that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a real dog, they just couldn't accept the fact that they could be wrong. And uh, when we were telling them that when they barged in and, and handled it in their very violent kind of way... TV uh, cops. TV cops, <laughs> very TV cops. They just, like, slapped the cuffs on us and said, hey, listen, you know, you guys are, you guys are jerks. And I couldn't say the word on... on, on in the station right now what they actually did call us but they marched us off to jail and, and, and harassed us Rambo style for about like you know two or three hours until they one guy finally had enough heart after the arresting officers left to uh, see that you know we were victims of just you know police manipulation and complete ridiculousness which but the ridiculous thing is is that we were supposedly arrested for, for victimizing a dog on stage like the testing supposedly when uh, when they found out that we weren't the, the, the irony of the whole thing is is that it goes on 300 times a day in the laboratory mm -hmm. and the police aren't rushing in and arresting them and humiliating them and taking them to court for, 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 the, for those purposes. So, I, mean, I did a whole thing on uh, vivisection and anti-vivisection and so on uh, just a few weeks ago on this station and I got my information from uh, Civitas. Mm -hmm. Which, do you belong to an organization or is there somebody backing you up? We have been like followed around the United States by ver various organizations, uh, PETA and, yeah. uh, and um, a few other animal rights groups. I'm, I'm not familiar with the, of the names, but they're different in each area. And now they'll, they'll, they'll set up a booth at the gig and provide information and, and buttons to all kinds of people who are going to be at the gig and want to find out more information about it. So. It's just been a mutual thing that just comes together. Yeah, it's good that the people are, are showing up on their own, setting up a booth and uh, taking interest. You, know? you also were involved in the um, Animal Rights compilation album. Uh, not directly. Even though we were asked to contribute a song to the thing, um, I believe it was too late to, to be included upon the album. Oh, you weren't so. on the album? No, actually. But wow. we, 
They were asked. There's another one. They, they said they were going to do another one, so. It looks like it, um, someone wrote to me just a few days ago about the Skinny Puppy interview and sent me the, um, which we call it the uh, postcard that went along with the Animal Liberation. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the front cover of the album on a postcard writing about Skinny Puppy. Similarity Puppies. would have been yeah. the network uh, released that album. Yeah, just put two and two together. Um, do you still get, listening to the first few Skinny Puppy records, are always associated with Skinny Puppy as some sort of goth band. Do you still get the, um, what I call the frustrated Bajas or early Sisters of Mercy fans who... I'm sure. I mean, you know, I mean... Follow you around. There's roots for everything, and it seemed that in the time of, like, 1983, the, 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 the focus was on gothic art and, and, and that type of image. And, and uh, it's a good place to start, you know, I mean, it put us in... Into uh, in, into the idea of, of of wanting to not just go on stage and 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 be a regular band. We wanted to go out and do something theatrical and give some some people a reason to come out and see a show instead of you know just because we were just so bored of seeing bands play. Just know, performing just, just for the yeah. sake of. Um... But I mean to get caught up in the gothic uh, visual or, or or whatever you know too long is, is is a big mistake I think and and um, and I think. I think that you know to to expand from there and to to get interest in other areas is you know an important step as well. I've already made one mistake, so I don't mind doing two. Did you guys do some work with Edward Caspell at one point? Yes, uh, a lot of the points. Yeah, a lot of points. <laughs> and well, we've done two records uh, as the Tear Garden. The Tear Garden, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we've done uh, the first one 12 inch EP which is myself and Edward, and then uh, we did an album called Tired Eyes Slowly Burning, and that was myself, Dwayne, and Edward, and uh, a friend of ours from New York, and um, he also toured with us on the last uh, uh, American tour and the last uh, European tour. He's a really good friend and very close. Because I saw the legendary Pink Dots just put out a new record. Yeah, I just noticed that as Blacklist, well. I haven't, I haven't heard I haven't heard from him for, yeah. for a couple months now. He, we st sort of stole him away for a few months there, you know, to tour with us. Is there anything vaguely similar to Skinny Puppy in Vancouver? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's two other bands in Vancouver that, uh, that that are very similar, and one of them is just because uh, we used to work with one guy before, and he formed his own band, and uh, it's called Frontline Assembly, and there's another band there. They're from Vancouver? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frontline really? Assembly is actually... Um, a former member of Skinny Puppy that... I always thought they were from Belgium, because they record for a Belgian label. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, they license their record over to Belgium. See the importance kids of writing have liner notes on albums so people like me can yeah. pretend they know a thing or two. Mm -hmm. I always thought they were from Belgium. Well, they're from Vancouver. It's uh, Wilhelm Schroeder, who used to be... Who used to be... Uh, no, it used to be Wilhelm Schroeder. Well, it used to be Wilhelm Schroeder. Really really the lead. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. All that CanCon I didn't write down on my music sheets. Um, no, because Vancouver seems to have such a great music scene. Yeah, well, I mean, it's fairly segregated. So, I mean, tours and, and stuff like that don't come to Vancouver as often as they come to elsewhere and in, on the East Coast, for instance. So people have to make up their own excitement. And, and, and the weeks are very long and tedious. So you tend to want to make up your own, your, your own uh, story, you know? Thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. This is great. This is what I wanted to know. No, I... We've got two albums, I think, that's on the More, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I